We recently discussed the video game phenomenon whereby a scary boss shows up only to be immediately obliterated by a much scarier boss, who you now have to fight. Good luck. <laughs> Turns out this is even more prevalent in video games than even we initially suspected, as you, the dashing and debonair outside Xbox viewers, had plenty more suggestions of your own for tough looking baddies we never got to fight because they got smashed flat by something much, much worse. Here then, presented for your enjoyment, are seven of your most popular suggestions. Enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. Generally, in Demon Souls, if you encounter a fog door, you're in for a bad time. That's because behind these fog doors lie bosses. Bosses such as Leechmonger, who is not, as his name suggests, a merchant who will provide you with a nice pound of fresh leeches at market price, but rather a horrible pile of thousands of leeches that wants to kill you. And maybe put a sign outside clarifying that next time. Anyway, it is with justified trepidation that you might find yourself approaching this fog door in the Tower Knight Archstone area of the Boletarian Palace, because anything could be back there. A cosmic horror that cannot be comprehended by the human mind? A haunting allegory for the death of a beloved family member armed with a chainsaw? A big dog? Honestly, with From Software, it could be any of them. Therefore, it's a massive relief when you do traverse the fog to discover that the fiendish enemy waiting for you on the other side is... a fat guy in a top hat. Yes, he's got an axe and looks mean, but even so, there are tons of these guys just running around outside. They're easy. Maybe From Software is finally taking pity on us and giving us a break. Oh. Yes, this guy lasts all of about four seconds before he's impaled by, yep, there he is, the real boss, a much more terrifying knight armed with a big sword, who is called, let me just check the name here, Penetrator. So I want to know how he got that name. He's not my favorite choice for a bodyguard, but oh well. No need to worry. He knows who his masters are. As everyone who has played one will know, the most precious commodities in Resident Evil games are guns and ammunition. They're so in demand that people are practically breaking down the doors of gun shops to get at them. As you can see. That's why bosses in Resident Evil games are so traumatic. I mean, sure, they're traumatic because they're horrible, gross, tooth-filled bioweapons with way too many eyeballs, but also because you have to pump an ungodly amount of your precious, precious ammunition into them before they'll leave you alone. That's why it's such a rare treat to see the scenario that a few of you suggested from Resident Evil 2, when Mr. X, the tyrant in Redditor cosplay who's been stalking you throughout the entire game, gets neatly bisected by William Birkin, one of the game's other bosses. <laughs> And then, Birkin leaves, meaning you don't actually have to fight him. Score! Daddy, no! <laughs> much more typical of the series, however, is this example from the much more obscure Resident Evil Outbreak File 2, an early online co-op multiplayer game set in the Resident Evil universe that sees your ragtag group of survivors briefly team up with a tyrant, the Type R, who you release to act as a kind of bodyguard as you move through one of the series' many hunter-infested biolabs. Kevin. Surprise, surprise, however, the tyrant stops being friendly after about 10 minutes and it's back to fleeing in panicky terror. It's clear from this point on that a boss fight against this guy is inevitable. So it's somewhat bittersweet when he turns up for the final confrontation all shirtless and bristling with new claws. <laughs> only to be immediately absorbed into the body of a much bigger, much weirder, much grosser bioweapon known as Nyx. And bad luck, you do have to fight this one. Hope you brought a rocket launcher. Okay, well, I'm out of ideas. 
Who's this guy? Barry, do you know who he is? You got me. Yes. At last. A red squirrel. Conker's Bad Fur Day is Rare's parody of their own mascot platformers, and as such they were free to come up with more unusual and ridiculous bosses than you'd normally expect in this kind of a game. Sweet corn is the only thing that makes it through my rear. How do you think I keep this lovely grin? The jury is still out on whether this was a good idea or not. A more traditional enemy is the Panther King, who sounds like a Netflix documentary about a man who owns and mistreats way too many panthers, but who is actually the game's main antagonist. He's a regal jungle cat who comes up against everyone's favourite foul-mouthed squirrel because his table is wonky, and his top scientist comes to the conclusion that the best replacement leg would be a red squirrel like Conker. Gentlemen. Yes, my liege. Get me one of these red. Squirrels. Hey, whatever man, you're the Panther King. At the end of the game you finally come face to face with the Panther King and it's looking like it's going to be an epic emotional showdown, especially after his weasel henchman guns down Conker's girlfriend Berry. Adios. What the? Hey, mind we is... Berry? But right after this bafflingly graphic bit of violence, the Panther King starts to feel ill. Remorse, perhaps, for his crimes? Guilt gnawing away at his insides? It's getting worse. Nope, it is in fact a chestburster from the Alien films gnawing away at his insides in a much more literal and graphic sense. <laughs> this xenomorph is, incredibly, the game's actual final boss, and we don't get to fight Panther King at all. His corpse is instead ejected into outer space, along with pretty much everyone else who isn't Conker and the Xenomorph, so good luck with that, Conker. It's not like you've got a power loader rig like Ripley did in Aliens. Oh, my mistake. Carry on then. Battle Slug was a series of side-scrolling shooters in which you ran through battlefields, mowing down enemy soldiers, and occasionally mummies, because I guess you got lost somewhere back there? In the first Metal Slug game, your main enemy is General Donald Morden, the leader of the rebel army you've spent the whole game fighting, and who serves as the game's final boss. It's a tough encounter in which Morden is armed with a bazooka and an attack helicopter, using both with deadly efficiency to try and get revenge for all those mummies you slaughtered. They belonged in a museum. As such, when playing the sequel, Metal Slug 2, later released in improved form as Metal Slug X, you might think you know exactly what to expect when you reach the end of the game and are greeted once more by General Morden, who is laughing atop a tank shaped like a hat. This is the point at which you're expecting a rematch with the General. Unless you've read the title of this video. Or watched any of the three preceding entries. But even if you had done that, you still might not expect what happens next. Several aliens appear and kill Morden's henchmen, and then a giant UFO flies into frame, blows up his hat tank, sucks the general in with a tractor beam, and then immediately starts to kick your ass with high-tech alien weaponry. As if that weren't enough, and it absolutely were, if you defeat that UFO, a second, even larger UFO that fills the entire screen shows up, and then you've got to fight that as well. Look, I get these are arcade games designed to hoover coins out of children's pockets, but this is getting ridiculous. Luckily, the alien mothership has one weakness, being shot loads of times by you, so you're able to eventually take it down, at which point there's one final humiliation in store for General Morden. <laughs> Looks like he got more than he bargained for. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Look, we all grieve in different ways, okay? Look. 
eerie hard-as-nails platformer Hollow Knight is a game about exploring a decaying insect kingdom, kind of like when I have to go behind my TV to get at the HDMI cables. Along your journey, you will run into various NPC insects, some of whom are there to help you out, others who seem like they might have more sinister intentions. One NPC who is very upfront about what he's up to is Tiso, a proud-looking warrior who just will not shut up about combat and glory and how he will absolutely kick your ass if you ever dare cross him. Tiso is seeking the Colosseum of Fools so that he can prove himself through brutal combat and warns you to stay out of his way lest you, once again, get your ass kicked by him. Sam. Tiso is so into fighting that he even hates things like lakes because they're too peaceful. So it's pretty clear that the game is setting up a showdown between you and Tiso. And indeed that does appear to be what's going to happen when you run into him in the Pantheon of Godnest, a boss rush arena where you face a gauntlet of tough enemies. He even teases his moveset letting you know that his pillbug shield contains a deadly surprise. Oh, speaking of deadly surprises... <laughs> Yes, regrettably Tiso gets sat on by a big bug called a Brooding Morlek and dies, so we never get to face him. Instead, we have to fight the Brooding Morlek, who to be fair to Tiso, is actually a lot scarier and pointier and fires lava out of his head, which, I mean, I don't know what tricks Tiso had up his sleeve, but I doubt it was that. Still, at least that wasn't a peaceful death. Hey Tiso, so, you know, silver linings. As you may know, the opening of the first vault five years ago triggered a chain reaction that revealed more of oh, Pandora. Ring. You don't want to hear about that, Vault Hunter. You want to hear about loot and packs and explosions. I'm Tori, and I'm here to ask you one question and one question only. Explosions? In the Borderlands 2 DLC, Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage, your Vault Hunter enters a combat tournament in, uh, let me just check my notes here, the Badass Crater of Badassitude. Sounds badass. The way the tournament is structured, you have to go up against the higher ranked badasses, starting with badass number four, Pyro Pete. Guess what his thing is? Here we go, my fans! It's Pyro Pete versus the Vault Hunter! Fight! And continuing on to badass number three, Motor Mama. I'm so glad you could make it. I'm gonna kill you and make sandwiches out of your corpse. She seems nice. With this pattern firmly established, you are introduced to the second ranked gladiator, Flyboy. A 16 year old with a jet powered gunship and an abundance of youthful arrogance and weird slang. You ball hunters are old noobs. I'm the new hotness. Don't be jelly, you bro. I'm just gonna K your race so hard, you'll beg me to SYITF. As you make your way towards Flyboy, everyone tells you how much of a noob he is. So by the time you get there, you're prepared for a pretty straightforward showdown. Oh, yeah, I heard of this Flyboy guy. He's a noob. Just stick to the fundamentals I taught you and you're gonna be ace. Even his boss intro graphic tells you this won't take long. This is where it aids you, TBR. I'm gonna DT my buzzard with your goddamn spine. Graphic, you don't know the half of it. That's because seconds later a rocket comes, well, rocketing into frame, blowing up Flyboy's gunship and sending him crashing to the ground below. Holy fuck shit! Some huge goddamn airship! Just murdered Flyboy! Surprise! Now you've got to fight this deadly, deadly murder blimp piloted by Piston, the number one ranked gladiator, who is significantly more terrifying than Flyboy on account of being an adult, talking in normal sentences, and, oh yeah, being armed to the teeth with turrets and bombs. Outrageous. What would Flyboy say? Probably something like, Piston hits different, no cap. Yeet. Skirt, skirt. Alright, okay. We were already a little afraid of Final Fantasy XIII boss Zenobia the Butcher on account of her being called Zenobia the Butcher. You don't get that kind of a nickname by doing charity work with sick orphaned puppies. But we were even more worried when we read the description of the mission the game gives you to fight her, where it describes her as an undying monster driven by an intense loathing for all that lives and asks you to go to the scene of her foulest atrocities. It also asks you to expunge her taint, which, I mean, I didn't think this was that kind of game, Final Fantasy XIII. Anyway, decide that yes, this is something you're keen on doing and head over there and it looks very much like you're going to have a bad time on account of Zenobia being a crimson crystalline monster with horrible flailing tentacles for arms. 
So you and your party ready yourself for battle when something unexpected happens. A small turtle with a lantern runs in from off screen, stabs Zenobia in the ankle, and then she immediately and theatrically dies. Which could be seen as something of a relief. If you don't know what a Tonbury is. Yes, if you're thinking this little guy doesn't look that scary, then you're obviously unfamiliar with the Final Fantasy enemies known as Tonburys, who are notable for two things. Shuffling towards you like a tiny reptilian Michael Myers, and stabbing you with their knives for a devastating one-hit kill. And now he's murdered Zenobia, he's turned his attention to your party. So now, you've got to expunge this guy's taint, which... I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start. Is there a shell under that robe? That's it, video done. Thank you so much for watching it. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you'd like a bigger, scarier video to watch, uh, we've got one up here from us at Outside Xbox and one down here from Outside Extra, our sister channel. And hey, if you like what we do and you'd like to support us, uh, please do join the OX Supporters Club at patreon.com slash OX Club. We'd love to see you there. Bye.